Well, good morning. You know, a handful of years ago, I was, uh, um, call, I was going to call a friend of mine. We were in seminary together, and, um, you know, we uh, had still, have still remained friends. And I decided, you know, I'm going to try to reach out to him. He's a priest in the Midwest. And so um, I picked up my phone, and I called him up. And uh, when I called, you know, I, uh, it, the, the call, it sounded like it, it kind of wanted to go through. And then all of a sudden, I heard the voice on the other line say, um, all circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. Have you ever gotten one of those before? And so, so okay, I hung up, and I waited. I figured, you know, I'll give it about three seconds. And so um, about three seconds went by, and then I, I called him back. And <clears throat> the same thing happened. All circuits are busy. Please try your call again later. So I was like, okay. So I hung up. This time, I got smart. I, I, I said, you know what? Instead of counting to three, I'm going to say a Hail Mary, okay? So I said a Hail Mary, and then picked up the phone, called him, and it went right to voicemail. And so I said, hey, uh, Father Peter, this is, this is Father Michael. Please, uh, when you get a chance, go ahead and give me a call. So after that, I, I went about my day and everything, and <clears throat> the, uh, about you know, midway through the day, my phone rings, and, it, and it's my friend. And so I, I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a little trick on him, okay? So I pick up, or I answer the call, and I say, all circuits are busy, please try your call again later. And on the other line, I hear, ugh, click, and he hung up on me. <laughs> You know, uh, today in the, the first reading and also in the gospel, um, we hear of, of some very important um, responses to, to the, an invitation that takes place. And what I mean by that is that in the first reading, we hear from the book of 1 Samuel, and it's chapter 3. And in the book of, of 1 Samuel, this here is the famous call of Samuel. And in the call of Samuel, is, if, you, if you'll recall, is that uh, Samuel is given to the care of Eli, who is who's the priest in that area. And uh, the way Eli is described right before this encounter where Samuel hears uh, the voice of God, Eli is described as being one of advanced in age, advanced in years, and his physical eyesight is kind of deteriorating. And I think that, that that little detail is extremely important, you know, especially because we have the, this youthful Samuel, this youthful Samuel who is, who, who he just, he's, he's, he's basically going about his life. And as he's lying there, um, lying there sleeping, he hears what he thinks is Eli calling him, and so he goes to Eli. Well, also, if you have noticed, is that in that first reading, is that it, uh, the, the time is described as being a time where the revelation of the Lord wasn't all that common, okay? And so, contrast that with Eli being advanced in years, presuming that, that his advancement in years, he's experienced the revelation of the Lord, to Samuel, who is, for all intents and purposes, kind of a, a baby that's, that's growing up in the faith, and so when he hears the voice of God, it, it, makes, it stands to reason that, that he did think, or that he would think, that it, was, that it would be Eli. But Eli, being advanced, recognizes that this is God calling. And so Eli, in his wisdom, points Samuel to the appropriate response of, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so there's... There's an, an, an older person in Eli that is pointing the youth toward responding to God. Now, I'd like to turn the page, literally and figuratively, to the gospel. And it's in the gospel where the same situation occurs. Now, remember, John, this is the story of John the Baptist and John the Baptist's disciples. And in John the Baptist... Remember, John said that he is not the Messiah. He's not fit to even untie the, the, shoe, the shoe strap, the sandal strap of the Messiah. But John, John is very wise. And as he sees Jesus coming over the horizon, he points out to his disciples, behold the Lamb of God. That's the one I'm telling you about. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who, who will take away the sins of the world. 
And it's in that moment, the same with, with Samuel, that John's disciples, Andrew and the other, they're invited to respond as Samuel did, to respond in faith. To respond in faith. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Gentlemen, behold the Lamb of God. And both the, and, and the, the disciples, or the apostles, they leave John the Baptist. They leave him as a response of their own faith. You know, incidentally, is that, that at every single Mass, right before we receive Holy Communion, Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist, the body of Christ is held up, and we hear those words of John the Baptist echo 2,000 years later. Behold the Lamb of God. And it's in that moment that we are brought into the story of those apostles that were with John the Baptist. And we're invited in the same way that, Eli, or that Samuel was invited by Eli and John the Baptist invited the apostle. We're invited to respond in faith. And so we do. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We're responding in faith to that clarion call that took place in the readings today. And so in addition to us being invited into the faith response of the apostles of Samuel is that we're also invited into being like like Eli or being like John the Baptist and having our our own eyes our own ears attune to God calling to God speaking to us to God speaking to others and us being the ones that invite people into a relationship with Jesus. You know, interestingly enough, the uh, father of Western monasticism, his name was Benedict of Nursa. Some of you might be familiar with Benedict, or with uh, Saint Benedict of Nursa. Um, he is the founder of the Benedictine um, order. And he, Saint Benedict, he wrote a book in the, the, I think it was in the 300s, and it's called the Rule of Benedict. And basically what it, what it is, what's laid out in this rule is the different elements of how to live a life both in community and growing in your relationship with Jesus. And so within this community life, there is a head of the house who's called the abbot. And in the, first, uh, in the chapter that talks about the abbot is that St. Benedict says whenever an abbot needs to make a decision for the house, because he's the decision maker, he should do this. He should go and consult in the chapter. He should consult the oldest monk there and ask the oldest monk um, for, for his opinion or for his insight on things. And then he should go and consult the youngest monk that just arrived. And as you consult both the oldest and the youngest, the Holy Spirit, he says, speaks through everyone. And we, you can hear the voice of God. And so, my friends, the moral to the story at the beginning of my homily is don't be like me, okay? Don't be like me. But be like the apostles. Be like Samuel and Eli and John the Baptist. Let us be attuned to the calling of, the, of God. Let us be aware that sometimes we need to point it out to others. And in doing so, we all grow in a relationship with Jesus that is deep that is rich, that is full-bodied, that is faithful. And so behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior.